What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? We are back again with another freaking video, and this one is of in particular is going to be Sister Wives episodes. I'm actually going to try and do three episodes today, and I believe that is episode um, 18, 19, and 20. Yes, I'm confident that those are the episodes that I have left. No, no, 17, 18, and 19. 17, 18, and 19. That is the one. I had to double check that one. But anyway, with that being said, though, let's not waste any more time. And, uh, well, let's get into it. Robin is a threat to my relationship with Cody just because she is a smaller person than I am. I don't. 158. Woo. Because I know that Cody loves me for me, and he loves Robin for Robin, and it doesn't have anything to do with our, our body size. People that would look... I mean, do you know what? I'm actually going to agree with this one um, purely because, well... All of his wives are pretty much different sizes, to be fair of you. And um, I think, to be honest with you, his first three wives were pretty much plus size anyway, or curvy, shall I say. So, yeah, 100%. I don't see a reason why you would, would want to be insecure. But given where we are now, and you're looking at the wife that he favors the most, ah, it happens to be the wife who's actually the smallest. So uh, it is quite interesting. But also at the same time, though, when he did meet Mary, Mary was in better shape. So there is that too. Hmm. Maybe he favors probably more because she stays in better shape than the rest or i say better shape but it really depends on what you like right and what is your preference so is that really a definition of better shape well as long as you're not like obese and 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 and, and unhealthy and you know or help them because of your size then you know i guess it's okay right anyway we continue our body size people that would look at my body people look at robin's body would probably think that i would love to have her body her body shape but i don't want to be too skinny i know that cody likes my curves <laughs> and cody told me um Interesting, because obviously Christine has now lost a little bit of weight, but to be fair, she has lost weight, so she still does keep her size. So yeah, I, I think to be honest with you, a part of me would say that they, 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 they're they just trying to justify, you know, they're just trying to cover up, obviously, you know, them being, you know, the size they are. But um, but looking at it, especially Janelle, I mean, if you're looking at Janelle in this picture, in particular, she's so much more bigger now, to be fair with you, you know, I remember doing the reaction yesterday to the to, 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 uh, episode, to season 17, you know, she's so much more bigger, but uh. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, if your man is more than happy to be with you, regardless of your size, though, then that says a lot, doesn't it, about him not caring, you know, and him liking the way you are. But I think, obviously, if you're looking at the dynamic of the fact that there were four wives, and in the end, Cody ended up shifting more to the one that was slimmer, it does... It, I, I, I can't imagine it not making an effect on your self-esteem and thinking, so maybe I should be slimmer. I can't imagine that not being a thing. But, of course, in this season, it would have been early days, so it's something, I guess... They were right to not really be worried about because that was what they were doing anyway before Robin came about. But hey, man. Hmm. Um, in a very nice way at one point that he actually likes curvy girls. And I'm really not a curvy girl. So it's not really like, oh, I've got some sort of upper hand with this whole situation. He likes curvy girls. And in a nutshell, it's kind of saying that uh, you don't have upper hand because you're the one that is not curvy, you know? But anyway, it is what it is. But we continue. Time to Cody. I wish I could eat whatever I wanted, like Robin can. And he says she can't eat whatever she wants. She really has to be careful what she eats because she, she just gets sick with a lot of stuff. I mean, the next part right here. <laughs> you know, part of me is like, oh, yeah, I wish I had that problem because then my body would look right. But I, I like food too much, so I guess I'm glad I don't have that problem. <laughs> well, very contradictive because literally she just said that she that she likes the fact that cur Cody likes curves and she's happy the way she is. So, we, so, so she, she was, so, yeah, there is a cover up to being unhappy with your, with your size. And she is, and to be Janelle is another one who's also lost lost weight as well, isn't it? Yeah, interesting, very very interesting. Like right, so, this website, is, this website, this episode is all about weight, pretty much in a nutshell. Um, there's a little bit more. I would rather enjoy food every bite that I eat. I would rather enjoy and savor that food. I would personally rather have Robin's problem, not have to worry about the prejudice and the stereotype that come along with being a larger person. That would be worth it, absolutely, hands down. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you. you <laughs> Having the problem that Robin has isn't actually a good thing. That must be a very frustrating thing for Robin. It's better to just, if you really care that much about your weight, which they don't, they, they, well, Janelle doesn't because she's still, um, she's bigger than now than she was then as well, shows me that you're just refusing to have the mindset to want to do better. But hey, man, I ain't really looking to make um, sister wives become a whole freaking my thousand pound sister type or my um, thousand pound life type stuff you know <laughs> but anyway man let's continue i'm happy here a lot of us when we're not happy we tend to butt heads faster we tend to be irritated and more edgy we fight more i mean listen man it's a damn shame that the kids are going through the emotions you know and um it's hard you know but to be fair i think oh, i say it's hard for me it was easy because i was moving all the time to be honest with you <laughs> you know some for me moving is easy as one two three but you know i can i can completely get it you know and obviously as teenagers you get through so much 
so much change within your body, your mindset, everything. So it's 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 always bound to happen. You know what I mean? By the way, this is actually now the X episode. Uh, this is now episode eighteen. So obviously the first one was seventeen. Um, and obviously seventeen was literally just about there, yeah, comparing the bodies and stuff. But yeah. <laughs> but now obviously we're in episode 18 yes just so you know but anyway let's continue you look over there putting on makeup the good and right thing doesn't matter what everybody else is doing get up and do the good and right thing if you want you can go put on some makeup take up your time yeah, if you want everything to be equal and go put on some makeup Han has been going through the emotions for the longest time possible and like, like bro like like come on man like <sighs> Hunter is a raging testosterone monster he just has this attitude of my parents are stupid and I am God or maybe they should <sighs> I mean, yeah, I mean, Hunter just needs to get over the fact that they moved and just stop being a little baby about it. Come on, man. Like, you know what? Listen to me. You are talking about the adults. You better never speak as respectful like that again. It won't be. It won't I was talking about. You better watch it. You have to. You need to respect adults. Hunter. There's been some issues. Tell him. Tell him. Tell him, Mama Janelle. Tell him. He needs to behave himself. Ah, what's wrong with this kid, man? Come on. Going on with him accepting Robin. I think in Hunter's mind, he's looking at me and he's saying, you're not my mom, you're not my dad's wife. And this came out of nowhere because as far as I was concerned, it was kind of like we were just all trying to blend our families and everything. And then I think as adults, we're just sitting here sort of like, what do we do with this? Why don't you that is a very sticky situation and it's a very hard one to know what to do. But I tell you what though, man, listen, I come from a world, society, a, a generation where what the parents say goes. If the parents say that this is now your new mummy, then she's now your new mummy. You don't need to like her, but you're going to respect her. And that is not an option. And if you carry on, you know what the door is. See you later. <laughs> you get up and do what's right. Get up and work. Do what's right so they don't have to do what's right. You do what's right regardless of what everybody else is doing. So why don't you get up and move the chairs into the playroom? They really do try to lecture us, but it never really works. They think that we're like... Man said they do try and lecture us, but it never really works. God damn. Disrespectful and Because you are. Thank you for yelling. Think about it. You are. How so? How so? How so? Mom, we go the fact that he's now creating a drift even with the kids themselves and particularly siblings it ain't cool, man. Like, he needs to do better. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? You going to ground me? What? Yeah, yeah, oh, you're yeah, taking yeah, away my phone? Oh, okay, I don't care. That uh -huh. is disrespect. Settle down, Johnny Appleseed. That, <laughs> that was pure Cody Brown right there. Let me go back a little bit on this one. That was pure disrespect. Pure Cody Brown. Okay, okay, no, I don't care. That uh -huh. is disrespect. Even the way he delivered it. <laughs> Sit down, Johnny Appleseed. Hunter just been pestering me so much about going fishing. First fishing, getting suburban. I couldn't take it anymore. I was at my breaking point, so we left first. I mean, listen, man. Sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do, man, just to get the kid just to shut up or whatever. Mm. Here, bring that blue full date and let's set you up with you. know, Dana, Roy and I and Brianna haven't had a lot of time to hang out. We don't have a lot of things in common. My children are a little bit different age. We get together as a family, but the one-on-one -on -one time we haven't really had that much time with. So it was kind of fun to have this one piece where they do kind of... Man, most definitely. When, once you can get that moment where you can have that piece, you can do things with your kids and whatnot. That's always golden. And you, those are the moments that you should cherish no matter what. Of course, and so I think we'll be fishing more. The rest of us went on a little hike near Bigger Lake. Well, <clears throat> the good thing is at least it was a, it, they were able to divide and do different, different things, you know, and it's a still be okay. So I guess that's the benefits of having more than one. Well, the benefits of having more than two parents, shall I say, you know, some kids can go this way. Some kids can go that way. Some kids can go that way. Some kids can go that way. Yeah. Obviously this way was just two different directions, of course, but yeah, you, you get, you get the gift. If Dayton, Aurora and Brianna don't feel like they're a part of this family, they can choose at a certain age to not be with me anymore. They could. So sad, man. So sad that, you know, obviously, when a parent has to go through the possibility that their children may not want to, you know, that they may favor daddy over mommy or mommy over daddy, whichever way it could be. It, uh, that's got to be one of the most challenging things for any parent to have to go through, to have to listen to, to have to bear or anything like that, man. Like, goddamn. <sighs> tough times. Tough freaking times. Goddamn. Um, yeah. They choose to live with their biological father. I have a year and a half till Dayton is 13 to cement these families together. And have him feel like this is his family. I mean, listen, end of the day, this is the challenges of being, a, uh, of being separate from the biological parents or the, the biological dad or whatever it could be, you know what I'm saying? Obviously, I guess I'll find out in one season or what not to see what, he obviously, what obviously he does. So I don't think, I don't think I saw him in this season, to be fair. But to be fair, I won't, I won't lie, I'm very bad at the names of body kids. I, 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 you know, I, I, I just about know about two or three of them, to be honest with you. There's so many of them. I, just, 
it's a myth to me. <laughs> so maybe he wasn't the most recent. He is in episode 17. I just have, I just, season 17. I just haven't seen him. I don't know. But anyway, uh, he's always, he's obviously so much more older, of course. So he could be doing something completely different at this point anyway. It couldn't be a case. It doesn't mean it's a case where he actually did decide to go and whatever, whatever. Anyway, um, that was episode 18. Now we're on episode 19. Yes, let's go get it. Our wives are our treasures. Every day it's on our minds. We think about it. But we have six kids. We're an established family. You can't just throw somebody in the mix and it works out. I so th this is a, I mean, obviously other people, obviously who are part of the faith and whatnot, but you know, these two aren't in a plural, plural marriage as of yet. They want to be in one. Um, you know, and obviously, you know, he's just finding the challenges of actually, well, to be fair, he does say, say it now anyway, but he, um, let, 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 let me play it. I know plural marriage is true. I always have. But how does a married man court another woman? Cody has been able to pull it off successfully in my perspective, and I haven't. So, you know, I guess the courting phase isn't easy for everyone. The courting phase can challenge anyone. Do you know what I mean? Everybody goes through. Um, I, I mean, listen, I don't know how the courting phase works. You know what I mean? I mean, I do, but obviously experiencing, obviously, I don't know. So obviously he has that challenge. Whether or not him and his woman now finally are able to find the extra woman uh, or, you know, I don't know, of course. Um, and they also, you know, they have already got six kids and whatnot. So they, they, they're happy the way they are. But obviously, you know, they do have that, that, that faith of bringing in that extra wife. But hey. And it's something that it crosses my mind often. I'm going to eat. Hurry. Everybody come back. Here I am thinking about how I'm going to be a playlist man. And I'm watching you guys thinking, how's Nicole going to do that? This way, okay. Absolutely. Listen, I, I mean, like, listen, obviously, you know, um, because it's just been them and the kids, it will be challenging, you know, to bring in an, an extra wife. And also that extra wife has to be someone that gets along with your wife and also gets along with yourself, of course. And given the fact that him and his wife are already in a good place, the question is, despite your beliefs, should you tamper with something that isn't broken? That is the killer question. I don't know. You let me know. For me personally, I wouldn't want to tamper something that isn't broken. But then again, though, this isn't me saying that you should only have an extra wife because your relationship is broken. I'm not trying to say that either. I should realize that might mean that. No, I'm just saying if I'm generally happy with just my woman and I don't feel like I need to court an extra one, I'm going to keep it that way. You know what I mean? But if I feel like, you know, it'd be nice to have one. Okay, cool, whatever. But for me personally, man, as much as I'd love to have as many women as possible, uh, <laughs> that's too many headaches. <laughs> when they're all in the period, ah, it's peak times, man. <laughs> I'm taking a vacation. I'm going on holiday when they're all in the period. <laughs> you won't see me for a while. <laughs> and if they all have different mood swings when their period hits and they've all got different types of periods as well, ah, but some women can be worse than others. Ah, yeah, man doesn't want to be there for that bloodbath. <laughs> but anyway, we continue. In Utah, you guys all live together as a family. Now you don't. So whether anyone wants to admit it or not, essentially, you got shared custody with Cody. So now it's almost a divorce. Sorry. Huh? What the hell? This, 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 this guy turned his... He turned off the whole conversation real quick. What the hell? This is sensitive. This is on my mind. I think my jaw dropped open. I couldn't believe that that was his take, and it kind of broke my heart. I go to bed with her every night. When I enter the principal, I've now cut my family in half. And now it's Nicole alone. Go to bed alone. Uh, I just think sometimes some opinions are better off kept, kept to yourself. That's, that's, that's what I want to say for that. Look appealing to most people. Okay. Does it to anyone? Yeah, no, I have to say, I get what Annie's saying because people have said to me, well, if you didn't have to do this, would you? No. Probably not. I don't know. Honestly, Cody's face explains it all. I was like, raw. So, 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 so why are you doing it then? I was like, what, 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 what? <sighs> Mary, man, like, Mary, just, just, just. We live in a monogamous world. That is really the norm. And so for that reason, no, I probably would not have chosen this. But because of my faith and because I believe that this was going to bring me closer to God, that's why I chose it. I've said before. So she's only in a plural marriage because she believes that's what God wants and therefore that's what's going to give her a path to heaven. So this is why she is now stuck around in this relationship for as long as she has, even though she knows that she gets nothing out of it. Knowing that Cody would happily just let her leave. What a sad, sad, sad mentality to have. Before that we did this by way of commandment, commandment in our faith. But I would, I would do this all again because of love. It's trust in God. God said, this will help you grow. This is your... I like the way Cody was like, but I would do all this for love though. You know what I mean? He, he, <laughs> he responded to well. Next step. You're married, you got six kids. Here's the next available step for you. So you believe it or not? And you go into it going, God dang it, I gotta eat my broccoli now. Yeah. I don't know if I would have done it if I didn't believe it. Never come Listen, that guy is very contradictive, to be honest. One minute he's talking about, yes, he doesn't mind plural marriage. Now he's talking about how blah, 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 blah. Like, come on, bro. Like, make, make your mind up. Make your mind up. But now, if you could have the perspective that I have now. I don't know if I would have done it if I didn't believe in the principle at the beginning. But now, if you could have the perspective that I have now, I would do it. So see, that's my you see, that's, 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 that's cool. I mean, she's true to stick to her guns for, you know, 
I mean, I just feel like her reason's better than, than Mary's. Mary's one's very corrupt, if you ask me. Mom's perspective also is how will you ever know how wonderful it is until you do it? And so now, here I am, I believe it. So now I'm sitting in church with my beautiful wife, and everybody is all of a sudden, every unmarried woman is now a potential wife. This guy, I, I, don't, know what, I don't know what he's trying to accomplish with this conversation, to be honest with you. And so you find yourself looking at the ground because you don't, you just, how, how do you do that? Whew, boy, okay, wow, all right. So now I'm in the church and everybody's a potential wife to me. Like, uh, that, that, that's weird. It's weird to hear. It's just freaking weird, but okay, whatever. Mm. And guys, so I don't ever prepare anything and it always seems to work out really good. One thing that I'd like to talk about is what I've seen over this weekend with you guys. This better be good, bro. Better be good. But bear in mind, I have to pause every couple of seconds anyway just to break the copyright thing. So yeah, I will be doing it on purpose. Mm-hmm, yeah. How you've laid your family out in front of everybody. And I've talked to you all a little bit about it, especially little ones. You might not sometimes feel like it's fair. When I was your age, we hit everything about our lives. About Hiding things um, isn't nice to do at all. Who we were. Even our neighbors didn't know. And that was hard. And when you have an environment where everybody's hiding things, that lets evil flourishes in that. When Dan... Oh, I like that, man. Evil flourishes in it or something like that. Okay, that's nice. Daniel was told he couldn't pray or else they would be killed, thrown in the lion's den. Did he go and hide in a corner? He did. He threw his windows open and prayed and he let everybody see him do it. Nice. Nice. I have nothing to add right now. I'm just saying nice. <laughs> Copyright is a goddamn BS, man. B-C-I-T-H. That's what I see the Brown family doing right now. No one can tell anyone how to live. You can't. Annie's compliment to us about us in front of our children was golden. And you know what hit the nail on the head with the fact is no one can tell anyone how to live. Well, I mean, to a certain degree, to be fair, but some people do live in a very, um, um, yeah, very interesting way that isn't healthy. Yeah. You know what, McKelty gets it. I don't know if it's because of Andy's talk, but actually just last night, she just said how proud she was of us in doing this. She goes, you guys are changing the minds of so many people. I don't want to be. But listen, but listen, McKelty's always been smart. I mean, look at her now, now, you know what I mean? Intelligent girl. But yeah, let's continue. Not having Andy with me every night, or my kids, morally, my kids, for them not to be around their dad all the time. It's hard. It's hard to yeah. think of going to bed at night without Andy being there. The Andy. And this is what I'm saying. They've been together, you know, for, for, for so long. There were six, six, six kids together. But bringing someone in would change the dynamic and probably for the worse, if you ask me. But it really depends on the people that are involved. And based on what she's saying, it would definitely make things for the worst. She's at her house. But we've talked about this and we know this is what we're supposed to be doing. It's not for everybody. It's, it's just what Andy and I feel like is for our family. This is just where I want to be. This is my comfort zone. We're sacrificing our relationship for this. But it's worth So there is no plans for Plurra then, basically, in a nutshell. They're just going to keep it the way it is. That's, that's respectful, man. I mean, as long as they both on the same page, respectful stuff, yeah. Mm -hmm. Nicole doesn't know what the benefits of plural marriage are is because she hasn't lived it. You're not going to know those benefits fully until you actually live it. Like, I mean, that is a very fair and strong point. Absolutely. Dummies, even you can understand. We need that book. They need that book. When you enter the principle of plural marriage, it's something that you almost have to just jump in both feet. It's like, it's like when you have a kid, right? It's not the same thing, but you know when you have a child, you, no, one, no one prepares you for childbirth. You just... You know, once you have a child, you, you know, you just do what you can. So, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. You have to work it out. It's, it's like a regular marriage. You have to work it out. You have to get it figured out. And it's not perfect on the first day. It might take a couple of years. It was Absolutely. Absolutely. Absolutely, man. Um, the really, it's just a closing part of the episode. Do you know what I mean? That, but nothing else really comes up. Um, but yeah, that's three episodes. God damn, we're doing well. Um, yeah, so we need, we, we need to finish season two now, which is good. Um, I believe there's maybe one or two episodes left now, to be fair of you. So, um. Yeah, we'll be back, back again, obviously, with them tomorrow and whatnot. Um, thank you so much for your time. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and uh, peace.